and now on a single video we're getting more than 200 frames per second and you can see now the system in action where I'm running these four six cameras at the same time and I'm able to get at least 60 frames per second per camera on just a single machine hi welcome to this new video this is Sergio now we're going to see how to increase the object detection speed with YOLO by four or five times in this video, we're going to see eight different key factors that affect the object detection speed. Also, what you need to change to increase the speed. And also, we're going to see some practical implementations in action. So I'm going to take different videos and we're going to see the non-optimized versions against the optimized versions. You need to follow this if you're getting a very low frame rate. So if you're not able to get many frames per second when doing object detection with YOLO. Also, if you need a system that can analyze and perform object detection on a very large volume of data. So if you have thousands and thousands of hours to process for your project with object detection, then you absolutely need to optimize the performance. Otherwise you will waste a lot of resources because it's not optimized or in any case, it will take a very long time to perform the detection on all this data. And also it's essential if you need to perform object detection in real time in order to process all the frames that the camera gives to your system, but also so if you need to run detection on multiple cameras, so if you have like CCTV systems and you have multiple camera, if you don't optimize the system, you can't process everything on a single machine. So we're going to see how with this system, we can have a single mas machine that can process 10 or plus cameras in real time. So this is huge. And also this is essential if you have an edge device like Nvidia Jetson, they are very limited in power. So you need to optimize your system to the maximum to get a decent performance to perform detection in real time and more. So this is only some of the things that will be useful, but anyway, it's good to optimize the system for saving costs and having always better performance. If this is good for you, let's go. Before moving further, I want to let you know that all the sources and a dedicated course to increase the speed of object detection will be inside the AI Vision Academy, in addition with other courses on detecting objects and more. And also you will have access to a community where you can interact with other members, you can ask support for your project and you can get direct access to me if you want to ask any question. Let's start first with the choice of the YOLO model. You should be familiar about this, knowing that there are different YOLO models that we can use. We have small models that have low precision but very high speed and then we have bigger models that have higher precision but lower speed and here we can see a chart from ultralytics with the different versions of yolo we have the nano small medium large and extra large where the nano version it's only 2.6 million parameters and the extra large version is 56.9 million parameters so there is a huge gap between them with the nano version that has the average precision of 39.5 where the extra large version is 54.7. So this needs to make you think that despite the big difference in the size, there is not a huge difference in performance. Mostly I recommend to go with the standard version, which is the medium version, which is YOLO 11 medium or the version that it's available at the moment. Let's quickly compare them by default using the non-optimized PyTorch version first, the YOLO 11 nano. We're getting around 54 for 55 frames per second, but it is using non-optimized version. This will make a big difference when it's optimized. And now the X large version. So if we put YOLO X here, we have almost half of the speed with the YOLO X large version. Second factor is the image size because uh, doesn't matter the size of your image. Let's say that we have this image 6,000 by 4,000 and we want to perform detection on this one. When we give this image to the model, by default, it will always shrink the image to a very small size, 640 by 640 pixels. This shrinking of the image, passing a very large image when it's not necessary can affect the speed. So I recommend always to not give a very high resolution image, but keeping to around like HD size, only 1280 by 720. Uh, there is no need to give much bigger image unless you have a complex project, but you will perform some more advanced detection. That's another case, but in general, give, give a small image because that's what the model will be using. If you give a larger image, there will be all the overhead and processing to shrink the image. And that's also something that it's affecting the speed. Let's start now getting to the core, even if it's not yet there later, we'll get to the real important, what really makes a difference. This is already a starting point. And if you're not familiar with this, it's better that you understand this. 
we have two options to run the model mostly we can run it on the cpu or the gpu the graphic card there is a huge difference from the cpu versus the gpu where with a cpu even a good one or a decent one you will get only a few frames per second in this case i was getting five frames per second with my cpu ryzen 5 5600 and with the graphic card we can get hundreds frames per, sec per second so we can get at least 30x speed increase but if we optimize the model with the graphic card we get even much more than that so you see here later we will see some other example where we get much better performance but if you have tried the difference from cpu versus gpu you will see that another factor when building your own system is to find the hardware balance to avoid bottleneck you get bottleneck when there is a component that is limiting the speed of another component for example if you have a very powerful nvidia graphic card which can allow you to run 10 or more cameras at the same time but you have a very low power cpu which is not enough to handle all the processes to handle all these video streams then you will not get full use of the graphic card because like the cpu is the hardware bottleneck in your case or if for example you don't have enough ram memory then the ram will limit the amount of videos that you can process at the same time because it cannot open just them all at the same time because there is not enough memory and this is quite common more than i imagine i had some clients that had some problem with running the systems to a certain frames per second they needed to process multiple cameras at the same time they had like a huge graphic card but then they had like very old like 10 years old cpu that wasn't able to handle much of that and i'm surprised like even some expert when they develop some complex software then there are these mistakes so that's why i'm putting this right here in this video then fifth we have the model optimization which is essential to increase dramatically the speed of your detection and this depending on the platform where we run this we have many platforms and now here i'm showing you like the most popular that i've tested normally we have the model in pytorch which is the one of the most common deep learning library that we use for computer vision and all the models that you can download online mainly like the yolo model are in pytorch format pytorch is not optimized for speed in this case we need to convert this model into an optimized framework for example we have the open vino framework that works with intel cpu which will be will be good to be used when you're working with cpus or if we're working with graphic card i recommend to go with the nvidia graphic cards and we have the framework tensor rt so we need to convert the model from the pytorch version to the tensor rt version and this will make a huge change dramatic improvement in the speed of our detection let's now compare the medium version so now we have the yolo medium by pytorch you see we're getting around 45 frames a second let's try the same but in tensor rt format now instead of pytorch i converted already this small so we go engine which is the tensor rt version if we run this already with this small change we're already doubling the speed so we're getting around 100 plus frames a second just with converting the model and doing zero optimization in the code one of the main factors that will dramatically increase the speed in object detection is to process everything in batches let's now compare a linear non-optimized system versus a more optimized system this is normally what we have we grab the frame we perform object detection if we want we perform object tracking we display the frame and we do this in a loop so it's a video it gives us an illusion that it's a video but a video is nothing more than a frame after frame in a loop why this linear way is not optimized because after we grab the frame while we are performing object detection the frame grabbing is waiting for us to get through everything detection tracking and display the frame how could this be more optimized it could be more optimized if instead of doing one 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 grabbing one frame one detection one tracking we can do this in batches so we grab 32 frames for example we give the 32 frames in batch to the object detection model and the object detection model can perform detection on the 32 frames why is this much faster because there is a lot of overhead in moving uh, image from the disk to the graphic card and it's a lot of waste and also detecting only a single image and detecting with the optimized model 
32 images, there is not a big difference. It definitely doesn't take 32 times. So there is a huge increase in performance by doing everything in batches. So I, an idea of optimized model will be grab 32 frames and give that to the object detection and then process traffic and display frame. This will make, of course, already some big improvement. But I want to show here even a more optimized model that I created and we're going to see the comparison that we will get from one to the other. And it's multi-threading, a multi-threading that process everything in batches. So how will this work? It's something like this. We have a camera thread where it's going to grab frames non-stop. It's going to put everything into a frame buffer. So each time it can grab frames, it grabs frames and it works autonomously. At the same time, we have a different thread it's a thread that it's performing detection. From the frame buffer memory, we're going to get all the frames whenever we have frames available, and we're going to perform detection. We're going to perform the detection in batches. In this case, like by default, I saw the 32 images at the same time is one that gives the best performance. We perform 32 frames detection in batches, and then this is a continuous loop, so it's separate from the camera thread, so they work autonomously. And this is going to put everything into a detection buffer. In this way, we can already show everything that we have if we want. If we also need tracking, which most of the case will be necessary for the projects, if we need to analyze or uh, track some objects, then everything will move a, into a tracking thread and it will be the same operation, the tracking thread autonomously will track everything based on the detection and then we save everything in a tracking buffer and then we have to do nothing more than just display everything that we have in a tracking buffer. This will make a huge difference. Let me show you what we have now with this. Uh, let me use another video for this one. So standard YOLO medium PyTorch. Let's run this one. We get around 45 frames a second. Let's now run the standard model with PyTorch again, but into multi-threading. Now I'm using a different code. I created this code to run object detection and tracking into multi-threading. So for everything runs a, um, a separate thread. If you want to get this code, we've also the course that explained everything. Everything will be inside the AI Vision Academy link below in the description. And now let's run this one. So we're going to use again the PyTorch model, standard model, and we're going to use batch size one. So we're going to use only one image per time. Let's run this. With the same model PyTorch, we're more or less probably getting the same. It's not able to process more than this, maybe a couple of frames more per second, we have around stable 48 frames. Let's now use still PyTorch model, but increasing the batch size. So instead of using just batch size one, let's try for example, batch size 16. We're using a non-optimized PyTorch model and we're getting around 200 frames a second just because we are processing everything into batches. Let me see how we're using the GPU resources. So GPU usage is around 71%. CPU is around 55%. And let's now go and increase this even more. So we increase the batch size to 32 and let's use an optimized model. So we're, instead of using the PyTorch model, we're going to use the engine model. So the Tensor RT format. So YOLO 11, medium, batch 32. That's how I said the model.engine. And now on a single video, we're getting more than 200 frames per second. We, and at the same time, are using the GPU only around 60% and CPU 50%. This means that I'm able to detect with 200 frames per second, not using the full power of this machine. This means that I can add also other videos at the same time and also so push this machine to the maximum to get 400 plus frames a second, in this case, just with a single machine. And we're also going to test that. But before testing that, let me let me explain like the last point of this video, the eighth point. The last but not the least important factor is convert the model into floating point. We have three different floating points. We have the Float32, which is the model PyTorch model that we use by default. Mostly that's used for training. Then we have 16, which is called the half precision model. This doesn't mean that you get half precision or half accuracy. It means that instead of float 32, instead of taking 32 bits of memory, the each value inside the deep learning model will take 16 bits. So it's half of the size. And this is normally used for inference because you don't see much of a difference in the accuracy. The accuracy is almost the same, but the model is much smaller and inside the memory of the GPU and it's also much faster. There is another one which is 
int8 which will have less precision and this is normally used when you have edge devices or like cpu devices that are very limited in power so keep in mind that choosing the right floating point for your model it's another requirement when you need to optimize the model to the maximum. And now let's finally test everything with also multiple cameras at the same time. And you can see now the system in action where I'm running these four, six cameras at the same time and I'm able to get at least 60 frames per second per camera on just a single machine. But most important is that I'm not even using most of the GPU, I'm using only 60% because CPU is the maximum. So this means that in my case, this should be a mistake if the system was designed for this. The CPU is the bottleneck for this system. It means that if I had a more powerful CPU, I could get many more frames per second, so I could run many more cameras getting 60 frames a second. If you only need to get 30 frames a second or even a bit less, because that's what's necessary for vehicle tracking or people detection and tracking, then you can run 10, 15 cameras at the same time on just a single machine, which is incredible and this is just a desktop machine if you run on gpu server then you can get much much more on a single machine so this will dramatically decrease the cost of your system if you are renting graphic cards i hope that you enjoyed this video and that you got a lot of valuable information from it let me know if you have any question about increasing the speed for object detection below in the comments if you want the sources if you get want to get in touch with me and with a community the links of the academy is down below in the description. This is all for now. See you in the next video.